eat smaller birds, which they catch in midair, and they catch them with their feet. So that's how they get their food. Okay, now uh, Beth Caracato is with us today, and Beth is a wildlife rehabil rehabilitator, and she specializes in birds of prey, such as falcons, hawks, eagles. And as we ban each one of these birds, then Beth is going to give them a medical checkup just to make sure that they're okay. So Beth is checking into the mouth of this bird to look for infections. She's checking in the feathers to see whether they have... Yes, she does have a big mouth. She's checking the feathers to look for insects or mice. And she's just looking over the structure of the birds to see that everything is going fine. Okay, as I mentioned, this is a female. And because females are larger than males, we have to put a larger band on them. And um, uh, this is why we have to uh, make sure that we have the sex of the bird recorded correctly so that we can choose the right size band. Each one of these birds is going to get two bands. This first band, and we have people here who are going to record the band number. Could you write down the number of that band, please? Okay, there are nine digits on this band. So there's, there's only one bird in the world that will get that band. The same nine-digit series is used for birds anywhere from hummingbirds to eagles. So this is the only bird in the world that will get that band. But since there are nine numbers on it, the only way that you can read this band is if you have the bird in your hand. So after this bird goes into the wild, then the next time anyone will have it in its hands will be, unfortunately, if it's found injured or dead. Okay? And that's what brings us to the other band that we'll put on the bird, which I'll tell you about in a few minutes. So this bird is going to go on to onto the bird's right leg, and if you should ever find a dead bird that is wearing a band, there's an 800 number to call on here. You call that 800 number, you tell them what you found, and you tell them the numbers, and we'll be able to tell just what that bird is, and where it was banded, where it hat, and where it moved to in the years between the time it was banded and the time that it was found. This is what we call a lock-on band, okay? What I'm squeezing is the band and not the leg. This is like a bracelet. I'm wearing a watch and it's not bothering me. Many of you are wearing watches or bracelets and uh, they're just kind of decoration. So we like to say that we're giving these birds jewelry. We're giving them bracelets. It fits loosely on the leg. Okay, there you go. Okay, now on the other leg, I'm going to put a different band. This is a color band. <laughs> so this band, you can see, has a color combination. It's black on the top and green on the bottom. And it has just three very large characters. Okay? So if this bird... These characters are large enough so that you can watch a bird that's living free in the wild, if you've got good binoculars or a good telescope, then you could actually see this on a living bird and then be able to tell where this bird has gone. Yes, I know you don't like this. That's it. So what's all this screaming about? Is Officer Bills hurting this bird? No. What you're hearing is the alarm call. This bird is upset. We're not hurting it. But she just doesn't know what's going on. So she's just yelling, something's going on, and I don't know what it is. And she's warning her other nestmates and her parents that something was going on. And I guess she uh, had to stop and catch her breath. One of these days I'm going to wear earplugs. <laughs> Okay. What beautiful jewelry. Okay. Now.
out they're going to get dusted. And so is my clothing. <laughs> As Secretary McGinty mentioned, due to DDT and other insecticides like DDT, these birds were almost wiped out in North America. In fact, by 1961, there were no peregrine falcons left living in the wild in eastern North America. The only place in North America where there were any peregrine falcons left was in Alaska and a very small number of birds on the coast of California. All the rest were gone. So why do we have peregrine falcons now? That's because a number of agencies, including the Pennsylvania Game Commission, the Peregrine Fund at Cornell University, and a number of other agencies, got together and started breeding peregrine falcons in captivity. So they raised them in captivity and released them into the wild all over the United States and Canada. And over a period of about 10 years, approximately 2,600 peregrine falcons were released into the wild. It's like the wild, obviously. Right. So these birds that we see here are the great-grandchildren and great-great-grandchildren and so on of those birds that were reintroduced into the wild. If it weren't for that effort, we wouldn't, we, we wouldn't we be doing this today. You'd have to go to Alaska to see a peregrine falcon. At the time that that was started, there was a person at Cornell by the name of Dr. Tom Cade. And there were many people who said, oh, we can't do that. Nobody's ever done that before. We don't know how to raise peregrine falcons in the wild. It'll be very expensive. It'll be a lot of work. And it won't work. But fortunately for all of us, he was right. And it did work. Now we get the color band that goes on her other leg. And there's your color band. Okay. Ah. Yeah. Oh. Okay, and I'll tape that one up too. Thank you. We forgot the colored tape, so we'll start with this one. The first one will just be silver. Okay, we got it. Oh, yeah. You saw what she did. <laughs> that bill is designed... That bill is very highly specialized to tear meat. 